Um, we will welcome uh, Ido Gino, the CEO and founder of Rapid API. So, G Ido, if you want to uh, join us, yes. Yeah, hey, can you see me? Yes, I see you. Everyone see you. We hear you. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Can you try to share your screen so we can see the slides? Uh, yeah, let me do that very quickly. Can you see that now? Yes, uh, you can hide the uh, little toolbar saying that uh, Hopin is uh, sharing your screen. Yes, Perfect. sharing your slide. Perfect. Uh, Take it, the, uh, there is the macOS toolbar, which is showing. Uh, I don't know if you can hide it. Uh, so the, um, the stage is yours, if you're ready. Yeah, thank you uh, okay. uh, for the introduction. Um, and good morning or afternoon for, uh, for everybody here, based on, uh, based on where you are. Um, excited to come here today um, and talk a little bit about uh, some of the best practices that we've been seeing and observing for API testing. Um, now, just before I get started, a little bit of background. Uh, so first of all, on myself, uh, I'm Ido, the CEO and founder of Rapid API. Uh, so over the past few years, we've been building a platform to help developers uh, provide and share APIs. And, I, and I'll share more about um, what that platform looks like in a second. Um, and then I also have some of my details here. If any of you have questions, uh, comments, ideas following the session today, uh, feel free to reach out directly uh, and have to chat about those things. And then in terms of Rapid API um, and the company, uh, so we are the world's largest API marketplace. So we started about five years ago, uh, establishing a place for developers to share and collaborate uh, on APIs. We today have over 20,000 APIs that anybody can access through rapidapi.com uh, and over 2 million developers using our API platform. And then more recently, we've introduced uh, or started introducing um, a tool called Rapid API testing, which also helps people who are sharing and selling their APIs on the Rapid API marketplace uh, to test and validate uh, their APIs. So some of the examples that I'll be showing here today uh, will be using that tool. And then in terms of the agenda that I would love to cover uh, this morning, um, so starting with you know, a bit of background on why, API, why we think API testing should be a priority for every modern uh, software engineering organization, then gonna move through some best practices uh, and recommendation. And as I go through this, uh, I am gonna use our own product. So this is gonna be a bit more of a live demo or a live um, example session. And I'm gonna be use, uh, using our own product, uh, so Rapid API, API testing to demo some of this functionality and how it will actually work. Uh, now, obviously some of these best practices, or I'd say the majority of them, apply regardless of what tool uh, you are using, or even if you're writing uh, your API with code, it just, I, I feel like it helps. Uh, actually get an idea of what, uh, what I mean or how some of these best practices can be uh, put in action. Uh, and then I'll live the last five minutes of this session as well uh, for questions. Um, so if you do have anything that you'd like me to double click or expand on, feel free to send it in the, um, in the stage poll or in the stage chat, uh, and I'll happily touch on that. So in terms of why we think API testing should actually be prioritized, we actually kind of see API testing or APIs in general is a really good insertion point for testing. So if you kind of think about where testing is usually done on an application, uh, a lot of times it's, it's done on the actual logic, the backend, the infrastructure, uh, and that takes the form of integration testing or, or unit testing more often than not, um, which is really great. Like it, it's great to have high unit test coverage, but it's also very expensive from a time perspective. It takes a lot of time to reach high coverage and then you can, it still doesn't test the whole flow. It doesn't mimic the user flow. So you can still end up with scenarios where you're testing, uh, you have very high coverage of, of your unit tests um, and your functions and your code, but you're, you, you still have a user flow or an interaction that's failing. And then the other area where you traditionally see API testing inserted is on the application layer. Uh, so using UI testing, things like Selenium um, or other frameworks for testing and, and actually doing interactions on the UI uh, like a user, um, and that's a gr it is a good way to insert testing and actually validate the full user flow. The thing is those UIs and those interfaces, they change so frequently uh, 
that A, setting up the testing in the first place is expensive, and you keep having to, to fix it and, and maintain it uh, as the UI and the, and, and the, um, the in interface changes, uh, which makes those very unstable and hard to maintain. But if you actually look between those two layers, that's where the APIs come in. So they connect the logic and the, and, and the infrastructure to the UI. Um, APIs, by definition, are kind of like contracts. They are very well defined. You know what an API is. You know what it exposes. It's normally documented, uh, or definitely should be, um, and it changes ve not very often. So it's very easy to understand what the surface you're testing is because the, the API is well defined. It's not going to change very often because people shy away from changing APIs because that means all the dependencies have to change. Uh, so you can very easily define tests on that API uh, and get high coverage on the one hand. On the other hand, because those APIs don't change very often, it's not going to break uh, that quickly. Uh, or it's not going to be something that you need to maintain very often. And you know, because the, every action on the interface eventually drives an action on the API, you can actually mimic a lot of the user interaction through the API. So the bottom line here is APIs are actually a really great insertion point for testing. And if you actually think um, about the specific reasons, we kind of see them in three qualities. First of all, if you're providing an API, quality is important. Your customers, be those internal customers, so other teams in your organizations, if you want them to trust your API, it needs to be high quality and validated. Uh, you can also get a lot of value added from API testing, and I'll show some of that with the best practices, but it helps enhance like in getting towards a real CI/CD process uh, that you can trust and, and have faith in. Uh, it can also be used to monitor production environments. It can be used to perform load testing. So there's a lot of benefits um, beyond just the software quality that come from doing API testing. Uh, and again, because it's easy, and, and I'll show that today, but there are a lot of great tools out there, uh, obviously ours included, but not just ours, uh, that can be used uh, to test APIs. Um, and APIs, because they're normally already documented, already well-defined, um, lend themselves pretty nicely to doing this testing. And then, and this is going to be my last kind of setup slide here. Uh, but we recently ran our, uh, it's still running actually, um, our annual uh, API survey for 2020. Uh, but I looked and, and took a quick sna uh, snapshot of what the results look like. And it already seems like almost 70% of companies uh, are either prioritizing API testing already or plan to test and prioritize API testing uh, pretty soon. Uh, so the overwhelming majority of the market is already realizing how big of a priority API testing is um, and that it is something that should be prioritized in the roadmap. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to dig in and, and, and start talking about some of the best practices that we've observed for API testing. And there's also going to be a combination of how to get started with API testing as well as uh, what kind of things you should uh, look for and, and, and do first. Um, and then this is a summary of, of the top of the best practices that I'm going to cover today. So starting from kind of best practices around how to build the actual tests to how to deploy them and where to, to use and integrate those tests. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. And really what we see is the best first spot or uh, the best interaction spot, spot for testing an API is just, and, and, and this kind of sounds basic, but it's just understanding what the API is. Um, and it's really critical as you think about this to not just um, to not just uh, look at the API documentation or make sure that you have access to it, but really understand what every endpoint does, understand what the flows um, are as you're using this API, play around with it, understand how the different applications are consuming this API, because this knowledge is going to inform what should be the basic flows that you're creating. Uh, and I'm actually all the examples following this one are going to, I'm, I'm going to demo them interactively. Uh, so if you do want to follow along, uh, there is a link here. This is just a very basic API that we've set up that has some interactivity and some state management uh, so it can actually be tested more thoroughly. So I'm actually going to head there right now. Um, and this is just MeisterAPI.com. It's a basic uh, Swagger UI for an open API spec. And this is the API that I'm going to be testing um, in, in the example that I'm going to be showing here today. Uh, so if you actually look at this, it has a handful of, of endpoints for managing a, basically an online store, uh, both of a catalog and an order. And then uh, you can actually go, and, and this kind of goes towards helping with exploring what the API does and understanding its uh, behavior. Uh, you can actually go in and look at all the endpoints and the parameters that they take, uh, and even try them out, obviously. But what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to download the open API specs um, 
just going to save them. My downloads folder, and then I can actually open up the testing tool here um, and create that first uh, API. So I'm going to call it my store demo, and then I'm going to just upload this little file here um, and, and create the API. Um, and this will basically be the basis. So now that I understand, or at least have an, a way to understand what the API does, will be the opportunity to start creating the first tests. Now, the second best practice that we have um, is when you think about tests, actually thinking about the schema that things return um, and, and, and validating the structure and that the API actually fulfills the contract. So the first test I'm gonna set up here is should return products in the right schema. This is gonna be just a very basic test. And then to do that, I'm actually gonna open up the console here and I'm still able to actually see all the endpoint groups and the different endpoints. So I'm just gonna go into the uh, get products endpoint, for instance. I'm gonna fill in some parameters or so skip zero, limit five, and test it. And I see that it returned some data about APIs uh, in a JSON object. So that's great. Now what I wanna do is be able to test that and make sure that I have an ongoing test to validate that this endpoint returns to the right schema. So I'm just gonna edit to the test. Um, you know, and here I will probably wanna assert that in terms of the assertions that I'm gonna add on this response, that I get the right content type, that I get a 200 response, all of these are part of the contract. And then actually do, and this is the most important part, uh, some sort of schema validation or JSON validation on the response. And here I can just do validate JSON schema. So this tool, and again, there are a lot of different ways or techniques to do this. But most importantly, what it's going to do, it's going to generate a JSON schema here. And I can see it. I can also see that it edits some logic. So for instance, on some of the strings, it introduced mean length one. I'm actually going to remove that because I want to let them be a little shorter um, or even empty strings. But I do want to require some of the parameters here. And then basically just have a JSON schema that I validate this against. And that's it. I have a test that actually validates the contract of the API that I can now run. Uh, hopefully, this is actually going to return a success. Yep, as expected, it returned a success. So now I know that as long as this test passes, this contract fulfills the, or this API fulfills the contract that it publishes, and it's going to work with anybody who integrated with that contract. So that's great. Uh, but also, oftentimes, you'll kind of want to go beyond just the basic validation of the schema. And this is the second best practice that we have is always transcending beyond that first or basic schema validation um, and looking at some of the functional um, requirements too. Ido, sorry to, for interrupting. Can you zoom a little bit on your screen because it's a little bit small for people who have small screens. Is that better? I think it's better. Uh, yeah, thank you. Cool, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, as I kind of said, if the second best practice or the second recommendation was just testing the basic contracts and schemas, the third one would be going beyond that and actually testing some scenarios around the API. Um, so now I'm gonna call this, I'm, I'm gonna actually perform a scenario or some basic logic. I'm gonna call it should be able to create and get product. So here we're gonna actually track the basic flow of creating and getting a product from that API. So again, I'm gonna hop into the request generator here um, hop in the catalog section, move into the create product endpoint, um, and then I'm gonna actually, um, you know, switch to the JSON schema here, and gonna be able to go in and create a product. So I'm gonna give it a name, um, ABC for instance, price will be $10, this will be Edo Industries, um, and I'm gonna be find a category around it, so electronics for instance. Um, and give it some description, not very thoughtful right now. Uh, but again, just send that request and I can see that I can get that product here. So then I'm gonna wanna add that to my uh, test flow to be able to test that basic behavior. Uh, so I'm gonna give that a name, create prod rec. Uh, and all I wanna really make sure is that I get a 201 and that I get back an ID that's a number. And again, this is gonna be different every time I make the request. I'm not gonna validate it in a hard coded way. But now I wanna go beyond just validating that this individual endpoint works, and this is exactly what we mean when we say functional validation, and make sure that I can actually take that ID, make a get request with the ID, and it's actually gonna work. So I'm gonna send this. Obviously here it works, but now I wanna validate that as part of the test. So I'm gonna change this to get prod rec, and again, make sure that I get back a 200 
and let's say that name is always a string. So I'm gonna go and validate that uh, over here. Um, and then obviously you see that this is still hard coded from when I was manually testing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna change this and use one of the variables. So the response of create rec, it's the data.id. So it's gonna always use the ID from the first request and change it to the second request. So the value of this is not only am I creating a product and making sure that this individual request works, I'm also doing a subsequent request and make sure that it works too, um, and that the product was actually created. So this actually validates the logic and the behavior of the API, not just the basic uh, structure of an individual request. And again, I can save and run that um, and make sure that it's successful, and luckily it is. So if I kind of just do a time check of where we are so we've understood the API behavior. We created some deep assertions on the response. We looked at actually creating some functional flows in the test. So going beyond just an individual request and validating interaction. Another recommendation is thinking about keeping tests encapsulated. Um, and this is a couple of parts that go into it, but really what it means, and I'm kind of seeing that I'm already running out of time, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do this very briefly, is looking at some of these strings and actually pulling them out of, this, of the individual test and into environment or test variable. So this later helps you uh, kind of think about running the API in multiple different environments or multiple different scenarios. So here I'm actually gonna um, copy this out, um, create a new environment in my API. I'm gonna call it prod for instance. I'm just gonna add a variable to URL is this. And then going back to editing my test, um, instead of having this hard coded, I can just use the end variable here, URL and let it run um, interactively. And again, I can do the same thing um, in the subsequent request. So what this allows you to do is instead of just being able to run this test always against one environment, if I now have a different URL for this API running in staging or in dev, I can just create more environments and run this API there. And I might just need a little refresh here to make sure that the new environment loads. Uh, so yeah, I can now select to run it against broad, uh, but I can also introduce other environments where I change the variables um, and have different and run it against those environments. So this just helps keep tests encapsulated. Um, so this is kind of the recommendation that we have around running tests in an encapsulated manner. Another one uh, that we always kind of think about is not just keeping or not just testing the successful uh, scenarios, but also thinking about testing uh, failure scenarios. Um, so for instance here, this is a happy path, right? We looked at testing, creating a product, and then we should be able to get a product. Uh, but what happens, for instance, if we're trying to get a product and that product doesn't exist, there is no product with that ID. So I'm gonna do should return 404 on non-existent product ID. Um, and then here, instead of actually, um, getting a product with an IDA new to exist, I'm gonna use one. I hope this one has been deleted yet. So I'm gonna use two, which I know doesn't exist in the system, uh, expecting to get a 404. And what we're testing here is to actually make sure that we do get back a 404, um, rather than getting back a 500 or the API failing or returning another random product or doing some behavior that isn't expected. Uh, so I can save and run that. Another example would be to actually remove the authentication header and make sure that I get a 401, that could be another test case. And generally speaking, the best practice here is just really to think about every potential edge case or edge scenario of the API um, and, te and testing for that edge scenario or every error code that that API can return. Uh, another, sorry. Another recommendation that we uh, look at or best practice is once those APIs are actually defined, Think about integrating them into the CI CD workflow. So again, most API testing tools support that. So does Rapid API. You actually have a section here around CI CD integration. So being able to copy um, an API URL that you can then integrate into your uh, CI CD system. Uh, and we actually do have out of the box support uh, for a few tools like GitHub Actions. So you can just add a GitHub Action step. Uh, and this is an example of like a very basic GitHub Action workflow. I'm happy to share this offline. Uh, in the chat as an example, but actually being able, every time something is pushed to product to master, deploy it to stage, um, and this actually uses apex.up uh, for deploying it to Lambda functions, 
and then being able to trigger the test to run against that staging environment. Uh, so this is another recommendation that we have here. Uh, and then lastly, I'm just gonna touch on two more uh, in the last kind of minute that I have left here. Uh, one is gonna be thinking about monitoring the production environments um, of those APIs with testing. Uh, so thinking about taking those same tests, being able to run them against prod environments, but also being able to run that on a schedule. So every minute, every five minutes, maybe for multiple geolocations, just to really ensure that it's not just as part of the CI CD that the APIs are working, but also live in production. And lastly, and this kind of goes hand in hand, once you have those production tests set up, uh, being able to also define alerting uh, based on, the, on, on what happens. So if something fails um, in production, be able to trigger an alert, be it page or duty or Slack um, or in, a text message uh, so that you can actually get notified and react to it in real time. So these are, generally speaking, the best practices that we're seeing um, for API testing. Uh, I was gonna demo some more of these, uh, but we are coming up um, on the end of the 20 minutes and I wanna make sure that we leave some time for questions. Uh, so we'll switch to that, uh, but happy to also share some of these resources offline. Um, and then yeah, I hope this helps people get, uh, and everybody here get started with some, some testing. Thank you, Ido. Uh, that's really interesting and testing API is a really important topic because uh, you can ship things that don't, do not work. Um, regarding uh, testing, you have been doing tests, for example, in production of environment. Do you have uh, tips or best practices around, around how to clean your test data? Because you may create test data, you don't want them to stay too long in your production environment, for example. Yeah, and this is a this is a great point, um, and I think a lot of people do get very angry when when you start getting production environments messy with with test data. Uh, on the, this was actually I'm, I'm glad that you asked this because if I, I had time to do full demo, this was actually part of that same scenario. So when you actually go and create a product, then you get it, and then you can actually add the delete call at the end of the scenario, uh, so that you actually remove it from the environment and clean it clean up after yourself. It also helps test the full functional flow. Uh, so you can get to test another endpoint, but also helps clean up after yourself. And for me, this is part of the principle of keeping tests encapsulated, so not leaving any residues uh, in the environment. Yeah. So there are two questions. Orian uh, Delen says, I may have missed this part, but how can we explain why some companies do not test their APIs? Is it cost or some issue or something else? Do you have an answer to that? Yeah, this actually reminds me of a great joke. Uh, we brought in a new uh, team lead uh, to wrap. This was really early days when we were just getting started. And he found out that a lot of our components uh, weren't tested and was like, um, he was really shocked by it. And then he looked at me and was like, what, does your team not like to sleep? Uh, so I don't have a good answer to why some companies don't test APIs. I think it's important. Yeah, other questions? Um, uh, just checking. Oh, yes. Is there a best practice for testing an API with a big payload request? Yeah, um, I think it really depends on the individual API uh, or in the, the type of, of payload. Um, um, the type of kind of payload that's being uh, used and sent to that API. Um, if it's a file, then maybe, you know, you host it on S3 bucket or you put it uh, somewhere in the cloud already so it's a little easier or you don't have to send it back and forth every time from the testing platform. Uh, but it really just depends on optimal. And, and most solutions, I mean, even if it's a larger file or a larger JSON, larger JSON schema, should still be able to support that. So um, I've rarely found that to be a limitation or a challenge. Um... So do you suggest testing against, against real environments, Ben? Uh, what do you think of contracts like Pact? I don't know what is Pact. Uh, Marco Davy, if you can explain maybe in, in the chat what you mean by Pact. So I think you say, yes, you suggest to test, to test on real environments. Uh, you have something to add about that topic? No, and I, I, I kind of say that, um, you know, it is also good to, to kind of realize that the same test that you're running and running against dev environments you can run against prod, they're kind of, that, that's where you want to keep them encapsulated so you can do both of the same test code, basically. 
Um, how to monitor production post request? Um, I mean, on the base of it, very similarly to, to any other request, um, I think it kind of goes to the first point that you brought up where you do make, when you're creating data with a post request, you should also make sure that you clean up after yourself. Um, so it's really important to keep about, to think about the full flow. So if you create data, also clean it up later. Okay, so Marco completed this question. Oh, FACT is a tool for contract-driven testing. So I think that's basically what you've shown us. Uh, for example, when you show that you can uh, check that um, the data match your JSON schema coming from your um, your open API specification or whatever. And uh, this is the end. So you can continue a discussion uh, in the chat window with uh, Ido. And uh, thank you very much, Ido.